how have you folks evolved over time? Any specific problem that you are seeing that you're still trying to solve because you're like, hey, this is still an unsolved problem. Yeah, first of all, uh, the Cloud Foundry business is going on. We've uh, helping clients to uh, migrate to uh, open source-based Cloud Foundry, including our data service automation. Um, that, that's continued at uh, full throttle, um, works like charm. Uh, in the Kubernetes era, in the Kubernetes section, we've um, onboarded clients where there's some interesting constraints. So in particular, one client, um, he, he has connections to, to customers in the banking industry. And um, after recent events in, uh, in Germany uh, regarding Wirecard, for example, um, the Control Institute, uh, BaFin, is, is pretty strict in uh, observing uh, those companies very tightly. So they basically asked us, can we find a hosting provider in Europe, uh, preferably even German, that will go with them the long way of going through all the additional security um, requirements uh, they, they have with their banking customers. And, um, you know, with the N9's platform being modular and infrastructure agnostic, it was a challenge for us because the major U.S. providers have been ruled out by the customer's customers um, very strictly. And, um, you know, felt like connecting to our original story uh, where N9 started with being a public pass provider um, on European infrastructure. And, you know, to just be, repeat a little bit of history, uh, we had tremendous problems with OpenStack at that time. And we've been evaluating European OpenStack providers, and we can see that these problems actually continue. So that leads to the, you know, let's lead to our conclusion that a Kubernetes with, uh, you know, their Kubernetes products in the hosting sector, they distributed, um, you know, automation there. It's not perfect, but you can get a managed or uh, at least a Kubernetes cluster also on those smaller providers. So it means that uh, the hypothesis has been strengthened that Kubernetes also cannibalizes part of that ex OpenStack territory and becomes an infrastructure abstraction. Well, you lose a bit of the automation power if, if those APIs aren't standardized on how to control the lifecycle of their Kubernetes. But at least you get, you know, that infrastructure abstraction. You can schedule your pods. And in this particular case, it also becomes very important that uh, data on Kubernetes is a managed, uh, you know, something that you as an organization managed. And as we have operators, um, you know, for Postgres, for example, and there are new upcoming uh, for, uh, for other data services as well. You have a self-contained Kubernetes deployment in this case, and all you need is a Kubernetes somewhere. So there the NNS platform adapt, adopted to that particular constraint, and so far it works well, and it's a good showcase on how a pure Kubernetes uh, workload, including uh, data service operators, uh, and how, how this is an important thing.